Welcome back to the Edgewater Avenue YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make the new Olivia One Piece. I've been getting a lot of feedback lately that my tutorials have been a little too rushed and I've just been skipping over details. So this video is going to be my first attempt at slowing things down and just trying to explain things a little bit more uh, in detail. So your feedback is very important so I can know where to go from here. So if you think there's some things that can be improved or things that I did well, please comment and let me know. So as far as what makes this pattern different than some other one pieces, the Olivia one piece is really high on the hips and it also has this low, almost like square shaped neckline. Uh, the neckline kind of reminds me of like the corset tops that have really been in style. So this pattern is a really good staple because even though it's a basic, it has these modern details that I don't think you can really find in other patterns at the moment. Four materials you will need, one yard of swimwear fabric, 80% nylon, 20% spandex is a great basic swimwear fabric to have on hand. And if you're curious on where I get my fabrics, including the ones that I'm showing today, that will all be linked in the description. You're also gonna need quarter inch swimwear elastic. This is rubber elastic that is also linked. Rubber is the best choice for swimwear because of its durability. You'll need a loop turner, and this guy is for turning straps, and a cutting tool like a rotary cutter or scissors. Everything that I use, including machines, is all linked in the description. I have a pretty handy tool list with everything, including the exact items that I use. So the last thing you will need is the pattern for the Olivia One Piece, which is available now at edgewaterapp.com. The pattern is 100% digital, and so it's instantly downloadable. Once you check out, you can immediately start sewing. What you do is you can print it off at home, it's divided up, and then you'll cut and tape to assemble the entire pattern together. First, we're gonna need to use our pattern to cut our pieces from our fabric. I'm making my Olivia reversible, so I'm using two different swimwear fabrics. You'll want to cut two in the front piece and two in the back piece total. And you may have noticed that I have the pattern half assembled, and that's because I'm cutting on the fold. What this means is I have my fabric folded, and I'm going to place the center line of the pattern on that folded edge. Then when I cut and take it apart, I'll have a full assembled piece. This can really help to make sure that things are symmetrical. So in my first fabric, which is this printed one, I'm gonna be cutting one in my front and one in my back. Then switching over to my primary fabric, this pink one, I'm gonna do the exact same thing, one in the front, one in the back. You're also going to need to cut your straps. I'm going to be cutting it in my primary pink fabric and the exact measurements for the straps are included inside of the pattern. With straps, I like to use an acrylic ruler to help me cut these, but it's definitely not necessary. It just makes your life easier. And now we have all of our pieces. So now we can actually start constructing. If you've seen some of my tutorials already, you probably have a good idea of how I'm going to do this, but today I'm actually going to be switching things up. So first separate your pieces so your fabrics are matched. You should have one front and one back in each fabric. Now for each fabric, flip the pieces so they're laying right sides together. So a back and a front should be matched with right sides together. You're gonna line them up at the bottom gusset seam. For your primary fabric, which in my case is my pink one, you are going to sew across the gusset to attach it. But for the other fabric, you're going to do the same thing, but you're gonna leave a one to two inch hole right in the middle. And I'm using my overlock machine for this, but if you don't have one, you can use a zigzag stitch. So moving over to my serger for the pink one, again, I'm just sewing straight across using my four thread overlock stitch and my regular polyester thread. I made a full tutorial on how to use a regular sewing machine for any swimwear tutorial. So if you want some more detail on exactly how to do that and just the ins and outs, I will have that linked. For the print piece, I'm gonna sew inward a few inches, stop, lift up the presser foot, pull the fabric out of the way of the needles, and then run the machine again to create a chain. One option here that I didn't do, but I should have done, is instead of cutting your chain like I did, you can just keep it. By keeping it attached, you can continue on and you don't have to worry about any fraying or any of that. Thank you to Megan at MC Swim for showing me that trick. 
I just wish I actually did it when I filmed this. Now move the fabric further along so there's space for the hole. Again, that's gonna be about one to two inches. Lower your presser foot and then keep sewing until you finish off the seam. And now that leaves a nice clean looking hole. Now our goal in the next step is we're going to attach the pink fabric to the printed fabric. We are going to sew them together and we're going to attach elastic. To do this, I'm gonna open up both of my pieces so they're laid flat. I'm gonna place one piece on top of the other, making sure that right sides are together and the fronts and backs are matched up. We're going to sew each of the leg holes, the arm holes, and the necklines for both the front and back sections. So with this, you're only leaving the strap openings and the sides untouched. I'm also going to attach elastic onto the same seams that we're sewing. One final step before we move on over to the machine, take your straps and you're gonna fold them in half lengthwise so that the raw edges are matched together. Again, you're gonna sew along those two raw edges and attach elastic. I will be making a more detailed video on exactly how to sew straps, so make sure you're subscribed to stay tuned for that. So before I hop over to my serger, I'm first gonna use a basting stitch in order to tack these pieces together. So this is not a necessary step, so if you find this confusing at all, then feel free to skip ahead. A basting stitch is a long straight stitch, and my intention here is to tack the fabric together before I go over to the actual overlock machine. Swimmer fabric is slippery and tricky to work with. And so what I do instead of pinning is I use this basting stitch. I find it just does a better job than pinning. A basting stitch is intended to be taken out. So before you're finished with your swimsuit, either break it or seam rip it. Again, if this is confusing, then don't worry about it. Skip to the next step. So now that I have my pieces tacked together, it's time to switch on over to my serger. I'm gonna sew all of the seams that I had mentioned before, and I'm also going to attach elastic. The way that I sew elastic is with an elastic foot. The elastic foot allows me to sew the seam and attach elastic in one step with perfect application every time. If you've never sewn elastic or swimwear elastic, you're probably confused, you probably have questions. I know I did. So I made an entire elastic series answering the most common questions as well as some nuanced ones. So if you have questions about an elastic foot, what kind of elastic, do you need elastic, any of that, you will want to watch that elastic series. So again, when I'm sewing these seams, I'm using a four thread overlock stitch. My machine has automatic tension, so I don't need to play with the settings when switching from just fabric to fabric and elastic. However, some machines definitely get fussy with that. So just be aware that you might have to change your settings. And I attach my elastic onto whichever side I want to be the dominant side, which in my case is the pink fabric. One more thing I'll mention here is I don't have any tension on the elastic. In fact, I don't want any. With reversibles, you really want them to lay flat. So in this case, the elastic's purpose is more to help the garment keep its shape. You can add tension to the elastic if you want to add a little bit more structure and security. Now that everything is attached and looking great, we're gonna get our loop turner out. And we are going to take the straps to the right side. This tool works by poking through the fabric and hooking onto it and then pulling it through itself. I find for me personally that this is the quickest and easiest tool. However, there are a lot of different options as far as strap turners and tube turners out there. So if this one seems like a pain, there are some other options. So now that the straps are done, we're next going to insert our straps into the back piece. So reach through the open sides and insert the strap inside of the strap opening. Notice that my suit is still inside out while I'm doing this. Pin if needed and then sew down to secure. Now I'm gonna switch back over to my regular sewing machine and I'm gonna be using a straight stitch to sew the straps in. This seam isn't going to stretch, so a straight stitch is safe. 
And I like to use a straight stitch because then I can go back and trim off the excess, which overall creates less bulk. The straps are in, so now here is where things get interesting. Reach through the open sides of your front piece. Reach in past the gusset and grab the back piece. Then pull your arm back out, pulling the back piece with you. What this did is your back piece is now inside of your front piece. Double check to make sure that right sides are facing together and nothing is twisted. In the next few steps, we're going to attach the straps and the sides, which will complete the swimsuit. First, we're gonna do the straps. Grab a strap and first make sure that it's not twisted. Then insert it inside of the strap opening and pin if needed. Do this with both sides. And once we switch back over to the sewing machine, you're again gonna use a straight stitch to sew those straps in. So now we're going to attach the sides together. This can be tricky, so I'm going to break it down into several steps. As you can see, there are four layers of fabric. There's two inner layers, which are the layers to the back piece, and then the outer two layers are for the front piece. Our goal here is to sew across all four layers of fabric, which will completely attach the sides. But sewing four layers is very difficult, so we're first going to use a basting stitch. So I'm first going to sew the inner two layers, the ones that belong to the back piece, using a basting stitch. So just bring those layers out and sew that basting stitch to secure. Now that the inner two layers are attached, we're much more equipped to sew across all four layers. So to do this, again, you're going to be using a straight stitch. Switching from a basting stitch to a regular straight stitch, all you really need to do is just decrease your stitch length. So don't forget at this step to also sew those straps in place. Now the sides are attached and the straps are completely in. Take some scissors and trim off the excess. And remember the first step when we left that hole in the gusset area? Yep, you're going to use that hole to take everything to the right side. The final step is finishing off that hole. What I do is I fold over the fabric and then use a straight stitch to just top stitch right on top. Because the seam is in a discreet place, the top stitching won't be too noticeable. And that is the Olivia One Piece. As you can see, it's super high on the hips and that neckline is just so pretty. If you like the way it looks and you'd like to make one for yourself, visit edgewaterab.com to buy the Olivia One Piece pattern. Like I mentioned earlier, this was intended to be more of a slow paced and more detailed tutorial. So let me know how I did, drop a comment below. Don't forget to head over to edgewaterab.com to go buy the Olivia One Piece pattern. And you guys know the drill, give at edgewaterav a follow on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. And join the Facebook group where there are over 5,000 members right now who help each other with business advice, sewing tips, troubleshooting, all of that. And that's all that I have for you today. So I'll see you in the next one.